Hey, Team Kestova, have you ever wanted to know the difference between a bachelor's degree in civil engineering, a master's degree, and a PhD, and which one be might benefit you the most? Well, stick around, because we're going to jump in and talk about all three and determine which one might be the best for you. Hey, Team Kestova, Rich, back here again with another video for you, for the whole team, growing every day. Um, before we begin, please like and subscribe if you haven't already um, but only like if you'd like this video or any other videos that I may have posted recently if you haven't man you gotta leave a comment you gotta let me know how to boost my game up but I appreciate everyone's effort all the support so far it's been great all the recommendations so let's keep this party moving route number one the bachelor's degree a bachelor's degree in civil engineering is a four-year process um, in higher education, so in college, in a junior college, a uh, community college, and now even today, especially with COVID and everything, um, more prevalent is online courses. And so you have all of those options to go by. Typically, it's a four-year process. That would get you a BS, which is a Bachelor's of Science in Civil and Environmental Engineering. That's typically the, uh, the title that you get. There's a couple others that you could mix in there, but um, strictly speaking, we're gonna just stick with that, uh, that degree. So once you have that degree, you start calling businesses, you start calling companies, you float your resume around and you look for work and you look for um, an entry-level engineering position for civil engineers. Now you can specialize, um, as we know, you can go the transportation route, you can go the geotechnical route, you can go the environmental route, and as well as the structural route. You know, structures, we all know why we're here, structural engineering, where it at, but no, all of them are uh, equally important, equally as interesting, it all depends on what you prefer. Um, and then from that point, you are off the races. You um, have started your professional engineering career as a junior engineer, or an, uh, an EIT, an engineer in training. Typical salary for uh, a bachelor's degree in civil engineering is $64,000 uh, a year, and that is provided by the uh, 2020 uh, survey for engineering, engineering salaries um, from the ASCE, and I'll put a link down below there if you guys wanna go more in depth about that. Now, a bachelor's degree really is designed to get you ready for any one of those four fields. Um, it, it touches broadly on each of them, so you don't really specialize in any one uh, category when you're taking your um, or completing your bachelor's degree. You might need some additional training for the specialty that you've chosen within your company. Um, those things are to be expected. It's not that you'll know everything in the world. You'll You'll continuously be learning every single day, especially with uh, professional engineering, um, because that is a that's a big part all on its own. That's completely different from the academic world. So um, there will be a whole nother gap for you to bridge, and a whole nother starting point um, that you'll be starting most likely from from basically ground floor. But you will have the fundamentals behind you in order to. Uh, help you succeed and work up the ladder and understand the professional world. So a bachelor's degree is absolutely fantastic if that's what you're working towards. All right, number two, we got the master's degree. Now a master's degree, um, and that is something that I myself have, uh, is typically another one to three years of, uh, of college. And that can be anywhere from, I know, a single year, uh, high, heavily loaded, uh, coursework path where you just take additional classes that um, really focus in on the uh, on the specific area of engineering that you that you want to focus on. Now one drawback is that you are in school for another one to three years while college was a fantastic time. We do need to remember that um, most likely you'll have student loans if you're in the United States and staying in school for a prolonged period of time, one to three years, you're gonna have additional student loans. So uh, you may be coming out of college with a master's degree, which is a, um, a higher level of education, um, some might say, but you will have a higher level of student loans. One little side note that I do wanna to give to all of the student engineers out there is that getting funding for your master's and getting your master's paid for 
is a lot easier than you might think. Yeah, rewind that if you need to. It's not as difficult as you might think to get funding from your school to actually pay for your master's degree. And that is something that I did uh, when I was in school. And the best way that I did that was went and talked with my professors. So I knew I wanted to pursue structural engineering. So I went and talked with professors that I became most comfortable with who were also structural engineers and talked with them to see what projects they were working on, what research they were working on, if they needed help. And they always need help. Like, let's be real, they're always looking for help in the lab. Um, they're always running around like crazy trying to secure funding. That's just a whole nother, whole nother world out there. But almost always they would love to take you on um, as a student. And ultimately, you can negotiate that the time that you put and the work that you put in to help um, on the research side of things for your professor gets paid out through the pursuit of a master's degree. So keep that in mind uh, and really, really do ask. They're not going to advertise it most likely. Maybe they will, but most likely they won't. You need to go find them and talk with them, and you would be absolutely surprised at uh, the opportunities that are waiting for you. After you spend that extra time in school, now you're in the workforce. Now you're flexing over here like, all right, I got a master's degree. I know everything. This is great. Um, let's 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 cut it right there. Uh, now you will know significantly more. Uh, I found that the courses I took during my master's got me significantly more prepared for the professional world. I had the fundamentals at my back for my bachelor's degree, but then I spearheaded and I focused on the one um, discipline of civil engineering that I wanted to know best, which was structural engineering. And each one of the disciplines of uh, civil engineering, we all know you could spend an entire lifetime learning. So there's plenty to learn. And I really do believe that the extra time I spent in school better prepared me for the transition to the professional world. It tailored me a lot more to understand how to manage myself, how to manage my time, uh, how to work through difficult problems, and not just problems in an academic setting. Uh, difficult problems that translated to the professional world, to the real world. Real problems with real buildings, real structures, real contractors, real architects. All, everything to do with a, a professional engineering or consulting engineering business. Take that with a grain of salt, but that is one leg up that a master's, I do, do believe, is helpful. Um, in terms of salary bump, I wouldn't get too excited. Now, there are certain times when you might uh, turn out to get a, uh, a larger salary because of your master's, but ultimately, I want to say that in my experience, um, as well as many of my friends who have master's, that the difference is not significant. The payoff you might think for spending that much extra time in school not getting a salary um, but instead paying additional loans might not be worth the trade-off in terms of the bump in salary that you get out of school. You're still a junior engineer. You're still entry level coming into the workspace. Um, so you will still need to learn so many things about the professional world. You're much more equipped to learn those things and most likely you'll be able to learn them and adapt a lot quicker, but you are still um, starting from the beginning. So in terms of salary coming from me, I want to say that the difference is very minimal between a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. So if, if that's any, if you take anything away from this video, it might be that, that one little thing. And some people, if they think otherwise, leave comments below because that's the great discussion that everyone in this team, we want to talk about it with one, with one another. Um, so I want to hear from all of you, but in my experience, yeah, they're pretty much the same. So, sorry. Number three, we have a PhD. Now, a PhD, I'm not going to speak too much on because obviously I don't have one. A PhD can last anywhere from four to six years and maybe even longer depending on your research. Uh, typically, if you're pursuing a PhD, that means you are an engineer who wants to pursue more of the research side of, of things rather than the professional business side of things. People who graduate with PhDs, they typically want to stay and 
do research, do testing, work with companies that do massive amounts of testing in order to update codes, in order to um, verify products, um, you know, strength of products and, and design, this is going to sound a little goofy, but design catalogs and design um, systems that uh, can then be sold to all, you know, all over the world so that other engineers can use them. Um, it is when we're talking about, you know, the NDS, the, the wood design manual, all those values and all those tables, or any code for that matter, all those design tables, all those forces, all of those capacities, just about all of those were derived through testing. That all came from the research side of things. And a PhD is going to be um, something that significantly helps you if you are looking to take that route. Um, it dives in, you spend a hell of a lot more time in school, uh, like double the time, if not more, and you work very closely with professors. Professors also, most of the time, have taken the research route in their careers as well. So that is something else that you could look forward to if you had a want to teach or be a professor. That is another aspect to look forward to if you're, you're weighing the options on a bachelor's, a master's, and a PhD. What I will say a PhD does not do very well is it, it very heavily pushes you away from the professional side of engineering. So understanding how to work with contractors, engineer, or understanding how to stick to a tight schedule, um, how to manage people, how to work in that collaborative space with other firms who are not engineers, you know, architects, contractors, like I said before, um, multidisciplinary um, subs that you work with, managing construction sites, all of that stuff is more on the professional side of things. And a PhD really pulls you away from understanding the day-to-day -day on how all of that works, how, how buildings actually get built, and when money is spent, that's a very important thing. Um, people who are very good at that are very valuable individuals. Um, but the, the PhD side of things, if you don't want to get into that kind of stuff, then a PhD might be more of the route for you. When you come out of college, if you have a PhD and you're thinking that, well, if I get the highest level of education, that means I'll get the highest salary and I'll be the most respected, right? Well, everyone will be respected when they come out of college, whether you have any of the three. Um, you, as long as you show a want to learn and to thrive as an engineer and maintain your curiosity and excitement and energy, everyone will, will respect you as long as you're respectable back. Um, but the PhD does not necessarily mean that because you are at the height of um, academics that you also equate to the most valuable. And in many cases, it, you actually get viewed upon that you want to do more of a research path and that you might not be the most interested in the professional world. So my two cents on that is that you will most likely not see any type of salary bump because you have a PhD. Um, I think the sweet spot is a master's in terms of uh, employers looking to the employee. That's the thing I think that they value the most currently. And this is everything out of college, entry level position. So this, we're not talking about anyone with professional licensing yet. So we're not talking about PEs, SEs, anything like that. So um, take all three of those into account. If I missed anything, let me know. If you have more questions, I will do my best to answer them. But that was just a brief uh, rundown of all three paths you can take through college. My number one choice is get your master's uh, if you can get it paid for through research and through the university itself. If you have to pay, depending on your background, you might want to weigh your options. Um, and a bachelor's might be the okay path for you. So that's it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.